Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel, hanging out here today. It's, um, I don't even know what day it is today, it's May the 27th. <laughs> it's Wednesday, 4pm. So as you can see next to me, um, apologies for the kind of flickering here, but I have the FM3 amp modeler, the, the mini one with the three buttons on it. And I'm going to check it out today and looking forward to it. Of course, I haven't read the manual, I'm going to go straight in. I have downloaded the software. It's running the latest um, firmware. And yeah, the fractal stuff is interesting. Obviously, it's highly regarded. A friend of mine back in um, England used it all the time, back in the old days when they had the big rack. And then the AX8, the AX8, I did try that two years ago briefly. I remember thinking it sounded pretty good. But here's the thing. I didn't, I remember not liking the black and green, the kind of monochrome screen. I didn't like that. It kind of put me off. I think the buttons were cool. The one thing you'll notice about this pedal is it's small. It's, it's not particularly light, but you know, it's three buttons. But it's not like an HX stomp, but it is fairly small and compact. Of course, you've only got three buttons. The biggest question with this product really is going to be, how do you navigate it? Can you navigate it with only three buttons? 
or do you need to go out and buy another pedal? Now you could use a two button foot switch like I have the little tiny two button foot switch that I use all the time with the soft uh, switch buttons for my acoustic guitar. Um, Mission Make the TT2 as well. You can use that to add two more buttons. Obviously these buttons are very nice, they look very cool. So they do sell a six or a, a is that an FC6, FC12? Either 10 or a 12. So extra buttons you can add on with one cable. Very nice to have. Obviously then you're looking at a bigger product. Of course, there's also the X3. I'm not, <laughs> don't get me wrong, I'm not a huge expert on fractal stuff, but from what I know so far, there's the X3, which is the rack unit, which is incredibly impressive. Tons of power. You can run four amps at once. You can capture tones. It's really, really next level stuff, but it is a rack unit. Not everyone likes a rack unit. It's also more money. It's around $2,000 and you've got to buy the extra pedals. So you're going to end up spending almost three, three grand probably but really, really cutting edge. This is like their mini version of that. So I'm gonna try it out and I'm gonna try it out by using Band in the Box. So what I'm gonna do is I've made a backing track. I'm gonna play some sounds over it. And if anyone is here interested in this pedal, feel free to let me know any sounds you want me to try out because we're live right now, okay? And if you're watching in the future, thank you very much, please subscribe. So of course, what are the questions with this product? Well, the questions are, is it easy to use, I guess? I mean, I don't mind having to learn something a little bit, but with some digital gear, I forget how to use it if I don't use it all the time. So I hope it's intuitive. Um, I hope it sounds really good. And having having said what I said about the, the, um, the older Fractal that I tried, I didn't love the sounds, but I will say this, I feel like I'm better at dialing in sounds now than I used to be. I kind of know now what I want and I've learned some tricks, which I'll share with you today as well in case you just want some general um, tips and tricks that I've learned along the way using these kind of pedals. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is turn it on. And I have turned it on to make sure it works and plugged it in with the USB and everything. What you'll notice is there's a very cool screen when you turn it on, check this out. Are you watching carefully? I might do it twice. You get the little logo there. The nice cut. So we've got a nice color screen now. It's not a touch screen. I don't really feel like we need touch screens. I haven't used the head rush. The head rush stuff I haven't really used, and they have a touch screen. I'm sure it's nice, but you know, it is what it is. It's fine. I'm, I'm sure that the next wave of these pedals that comes out will all have touch screens and we'll all come to expect it. It does have a very nice clear and well, I say clear. The fonts aren't particularly huge. It might be a deal breaker for you. I don't know if you can adjust them. Remember, this is brand new. This is day one. So I will do another video on this thing when I know how to use it. Today, I'm just literally finding my way, giving first impressions, so bear with me. But yeah, the screen is a decent size. The fonts are a little bit on the small size. Maybe they can be changed, I'm not sure. What I do know is the firmware is still very early on these things, and we're gonna get new firmware all the time. I think they release updates every week almost. So maybe things like that will be changed. Just something that, just some things that I observe that people tell me in the communities and friends that are musicians, things that they look for. But you do get the, the uh, screens here above each of the three buttons and they're very nice to read. They're very clear, decent resolution and everything else. And the lights are very cool. It looks like a very well-made product. It's very easy to move it around, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna break, which is important. Now, one thing I will say, they haven't put on the top what the connectors are on the back, and I wish they would do that. As we go along, I'll reference Helix, Kemper, and Fractal because I've, well, I've got a Helix and a Kemper, so I may as well, right? The one thing that Kemper did really well on their, on their floor pedal is they labeled the top. At the back of the unit, they labeled it here with what everything was. Now, you can buy stickers and things to tell you what they are. Of course, um, Chad Boston sells them gear by Siva. But isn't it nice when you buy something and it's it's ready to go? So you take it to the stage, you look down, you know where to plug the guitar. So on this one, the guitar is the bottom right at the back. It's kind of obvious, you'll remember that. And the XLR out is just mono right now, is next to it. Okay, it's not hard to remember, but I do like the way Kemper labels the top of the unit so you know what is what. Very basic, very simple, but really appreciated. I think that's a cool thing. Maybe not so much on this because it's a smaller pedal, but even so, I think that's a, I think that's a good uh, way to go with the design. So I've just got USB out. It's a regular IEC cable, which is appreciated. Um, kind of kettle lead IEC. In England, they call them a kettle lead. So I, have to, I still reference it as that. 
Then we've got the XLR out. So it's a single, you, of course you want to use stereo, if you, especially if you're using in-ears like me. And then you've got uh, the guitar in right there. So I'm going to bring up the editor screen to show you what it looks like on the screen because I, it'll be easier for me to edit it as a first time user with the editor, I'm pretty sure. So let me just load up the software and get it connected here. Okay, and I'm gonna take you to the desktop right here. All right, awesome. So this is what you get. This is the same as their old editor, I remember it well. Um, it looks higher resolution, which again is appreciated. I like when the software is HD on my screen because most computers now have an HD screen, right? So it looks cool. Um, this is how it works. You basically got, it. this is a preset called Double Verb. And like most of these things, you've got the input here and you can click on it. You have a noise gate here, four different channels, A, B, C, and D. And this is the noise gate, which you can turn on like this. Very good for your heavier sounds, of course. And then you've got a compressor on this preset, compressor, wah, drive, amp, cab, chorus, flanger, delay, rotary, reverb, and your output block, which again has some settings on that as well, level and balance. Now, this isn't as powerful as some other products. That's what people are talking about. I know some people are getting these and saying it's not powerful enough. The question I guess you have to ask yourself is, is this powerful enough for you? Do you need more blocks than this? Because if you look at the top right of the screen, you can see this is currently using 77% or 79% of the CPU. If you go over 80, it will start to shut down. It won't shut down, it will, it will cut the sound. So really this is the kind of stuff you can do. Of course, you can use other presets. I don't like limitations, and for that reason, I'd love to try the X3, because I mean, it'd just be amazing to be able to just throw anything at it you want. One thing I love about the plugin Helix for the computer, the Helix native, is that you can just load anything. If you assign it to use your computer's hardware in an unlimited fashion, you can just make a preset with 10 amps. If you have a Mac, a Mac Pro, you could have 10 amps, 20 drives, 30 delays, a looper, you can really go to town. I think that's cool because I am lazy with my presets and I like to just throw stuff at one preset and not use multiple presets. Will it be an issue? Who knows? We'll have to try it and find out. I mean, if I use a real amp in CAV, I tend to use a combo amp, a boost, the channels of the amp, a drive pedal and a delay, maybe a wah-wah and a looper. That's kind of it. So I think I should be fine with this, but we're gonna find out. So we have a compressor here. Never used to use them, been using them more lately since the Helix update that shows you what they're doing with the input um, signal there. So I have been using them more lately, so I might use that here. The wire is here, you're gonna have to connect an expression pedal if, if you wanna use that, of course, unless you use the auto wire. Drive is here, the drive pedal, and you've got different ones here. So these are the different drive pedals that you have. I would probably just use the Tube Screamer 808. I like to push the amp with that. I'm always pushing amps now. It sounds so good to me. Um, but you've got some other ones here as well. There's, there's your usual ones, the treble boost, the king of tone, interesting. Perhaps I can compare that with the Helix one at some point. You've got the Zen Master. Again, that's in the Helix as well. You've got the Rat. So most of these are in the Helix. And of course, as we know, the Kemper only has a few drive pedals. It's kind of, I won't say it's downfall, but some people don't like that. This is a nice selection of drive pedals. And again, I'm sure they're adding more all the time. So this is going to be good. I'll try those out during this stream for sure. And it looks like you can save favorites as well. Remember, I haven't read the manual. You should always read the manual for these things three times before you even turn them on. But today, I'm just going to, I just want to get a real first impressions today. So we've got that drive pedal there. Then we've got the amp block. Now, this shows authentic. And we've got input drive, which I presume is gain, right? You're the gain, bass, middle, and treble a bright switch on or off, an input trim, not quite sure what that does, I, mean, I can kind of guess, but I'd have to research that. The level and the balance, yeah, obviously, um, the input select bypass mode, that's very easy. Now, some people complain that fractal products are overly complicated, they're, like, they're way too complicated. Well, here's the thing with this, this is very simple. I like this quite a lot. Now, if you go to ideal, it adds, okay, this is what they're talking about. If you go through this stuff, I mean, look, Preamp settings, I wouldn't even know where to begin. On my Helix, I have some bias settings and things, and even with them, I don't really know where to begin. I sometimes tweak them to see what happens. With this one, oh my goodness. 
Now, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, lately I've been playing my combo amp, my Helix, quite a lot. With the Helix, I tend to just load up an amp and just make it sound good and go. With the combo amp, of course, I just turn those few settings and I go. So, one second. Yeah, so the thing is, um, this could be what they call option paralysis. This could be way too much. Well, my solution to that is just don't use it. I think they're very clever here because what they've done is they've given you the authentic settings and that's that. You can just use that. And that's how I will personally use it because with these settings, I believe I can get what I need from the amp. And if I can't, then I need to change the amp. That's how I feel about it. If you know what you're doing, if you're experienced and you want to change what's going on, I mean, look at this power supply. I mean, I mean, I, I just wouldn't even go near this stuff. Maybe in the future I could explore these things. Look at this. It shows you the curve. You know, it's cool stuff to have access to. I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think you've got to be very careful how far you get into this. I mean, look at this. You've got uh, <laughs> an EQ built in here as well. Of course, you could add an EQ, but you don't need to. There's an EQ in every amp. I presume these are in every single amp. Output compression. And a lot of these are in the Kemper as well. People say the Kemper is easy to use. You load up a profile and play. And while that's true, you do have access to things like these in the Kemper as well. And there's a few parameters in the Kemper which really bring the amps to life for me. So I do think these extra controls are important. I really do. But I'm going to stick with authentic because look at that. That should be all I need. It's a Fender Twin with the Fender Twin controls. And also, don't forget, you've got your cab controls. If you want to do a high cut or a low cut, which I do a lot these days on the Helix, then that could be a good thing to have, right? So I'm going to stick with the stock. By the way, the presets are here if you want me to try any of them during this stream. And this is a Fender Twin preset. Here we go. So these are all different presets that you have. As you can see, there's quite a few. But I'm going to stick with this Fender Twin for now. I'm for my Strat. I want to get a nice clean sound. Now the chorus is here. Again, different types of chorus. And again, look, basic or more involved. I would just probably leave it a basic. I love that there's a mix control there. Um, actually, you know what I love, what I'm very impressed about is that all the drive pedals and all the effects have a mix. That's something I've asked for for my Helix for a long time. I want a mix and an EQ on every, on every block. I know you can assign an EQ on the Helix to adjust that with snapshots. But I love that you've just got a mix on everything here. You just you, you just go over, you know, load the effect and you can mix it. You haven't got to do anything else. I think that's very clever. Oh, and this, I love this too. There's a graphic EQ on everything as well. So if the tone isn't quite right and you really think, well, I need 4,000 here, you can just push it up and you're good. You haven't got to load an EQ. So although this doesn't have as many blocks available as say the Helix, it does have some workarounds that, that mean that you might not need them. Because for example, rather than loading the EQ block with this drive, you can just change the EQ from within the drive. That is very, very nice. I like that a lot. I really do. Now with the chorus, look, same thing. You've got a tone and you've got a mix control. So that's really cool. Again, I don't use chorus that often. I could change that for something else. We will explore, explore. We'll explore the, pitch, the pitch shift. This has polyphonic pitch shifting that is coming to the Helix and the Kemper does it pretty well right now, but this is very good. And they've actually got a new algorithm which is coming as well, which I'm told is even better. So that's cool. Delay is here. Again, there's that mix control. It can be global as well. Here's a rotary, again, a mix control. Here's a reverb, again, a mix control. Here's your output block right there. And look, you've got more blocks too. You can assign things down here. There's two inputs, two outputs. You can have two things in there. Just watch that CPU. That's the only thing. You can't go too crazy with this unit. I wish you could, but then again, you've only got three buttons anyway. I won't explore the three buttons today. I'm told that you can press and hold and press. And with those combinations, you can cover all your bases without using additional foot switches, maybe just a two button basic foot switch. You don't need to go out and buy their add-on switches. Will that work in, in practice or will it be a pain in the butt? I don't know. It's something I'd need to try. All right, I think we should plug in the guitar and see what this thing actually sounds like with a guitar plugged into it. What do you say? Let's see what it sounds like. So today I'm using my Fender Strat. Right here, I'm gonna to go to myself again. 
we have the Fender Strat here, and I am going to tune it. You're hearing it through the mic right now, so I'm going to mute that microphone. I'm going to tune it up. So I'm going to go to the tuner on the screen here. Now, this is kind of cool. Again, this is a feature that I want to see on the Helix. I'm, I'm not bashing the Helix. I think all these companies can borrow and steal ideas from each other. I think that's what they do with um, iPhones and Android phones, right? If I click tuner in the editor, you get a tuner. You don't have, you know, you don't have to go to the pedal to tune. You can tune from your screen. I'm pretty sure they do that for the rack unit. It's, it's very useful for the rack, of course. So the tuner on the on the Mac screen on the editor, it's not bad. It doesn't feel the most responsive in the world. It's not it's not my Peterson, but it's doing the job. And I'll just check that on the screen as well. Yeah, I prefer the one on the screen because you have the dial at the bottom and the one at the top. I'm not sure if there's a strobe mode. I would like to see a strobe mode because I love strobe tuners, but that seems to work absolutely fine and it mutes the, the signal. Now, one thing I have noticed about this, which is really, really cool, and again, this is on the Kemper. This is one of the Kemper features I love, and again, I wanna see come to other products. When you look at your screen, you always have a tuner. That is so cool. I don't know if you can see it on there, but if you look at the top of the display, right here, there's two green arrows, and those green arrows indicate at all times while you're playing, if you're in tune. Now, the reason I love this is because you can be playing a gig and just hit an open string. Okay, the audience might hear it, but just hit the string and check if that's in tune. You could obviously mute it and check with that. You haven't got to go into the tuner. There's always a tuner there. And while I'd rather go into the tuner, that's fine, it's cool. Um, I, that's on the Kemper. They actually have a hardware LED on the Kemper and that's a really nice, that's a really nice feature. On here, it's software. So again, I'd love to see other product, products adopt this. It's also handy because obviously you haven't got so many foot switches. There's not a dedicated tuner foot switch. So you don't really need to have that because you can just use the tuner here. The tuner's always on there. So I think that's a really, really nice feature. It's also great for practicing because as you're playing, if you bend a string, You see that if you bend a string, you can check the pitch of your bend if you need to. It's, good. it's a good thing to practice with too, if, you want, if you're into that kind of thing. All right, let me see what we got here. I need to turn the volume on for the pedal. So you're hearing my strings. I will turn those off in a second. But what you've got here is this sound. You've just got the amp, the cab, and the reverb. That reverb is very nice, by the way. Now I can tell straight away that sound isn't bright enough for me. So all I would do is go into the amp, what I've been doing lately, and I do this on all my products, is I turn the bass down. I've come to realize that that bass, before I t touch the treble, I want to bring the bass down. It, it makes the treble appear um, more prominent. So that's a good thing. And also, I just don't like a ton of low end. So I'm going to bring that down. And then I will bring up the treble if I feel there's still not enough brightness to the sound. So let me try that. There's also a bright switch, which I could engage, but I'm going to try doing it with the treble. So I'm going to mute this mic and play the guitar. You see what I mean? It's incredible. It goes from kind of boomy and dull sounding to very cutting and bright without boosting the treble. So rather than adding EQ, I'm subtracting EQ. And that's a really cool thing to do. Um, always, if you want more treble, cut some bass. If you want more um, bass, if you want more bass, cut some treble. Like do it that way. Don't boost EQ. Try to remove it first. So let me play that again. I think that sounds really good. I'll do it flat as before, and then I'll show you what happens when I cut that bass. I like that quite a lot. 
Now, I'm not one for that kind of edge of breakup on my clean. I like to have a clean that's very clean. So I'll just bring that input gain down. I presume that that's a presume. I presume that is a uh, like a gain. So I'll bring it down to one. I guess you can double. Yeah, you can type it in as well. So I'll put that as one. Awesome. I like the fact that's something you can't do on the Kemper. You can't use the editor like that. You have to ma manually move things around. They need to steal that. Sorry, they need to borrow that idea. <laughs> hey, Mark, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining me. Have you ever used one of these things? You know, as much as I love the Voice Live 3 for acoustic and vocals, like the amps and things on these pedals are just, they're just incredible. The amps, I want to get into the amps on the Voice Live 3. Mark Bell has a Voice Live 3. But they just don't, they don't use impulse responses. They don't use state-of-the-art modeling. I'm sure they can sound decent and it's nice to have an all-in-one, but... I really want to see a Voice Live 3 with this kind of technology. This is so good. It sounds so good, Mark. Let's see if you agree with me. We'll find out in a minute. Um, so the gain is down. Sometimes if it sounds a bit squashy, it can be a compressor. I'm not, that's why I'm not a big fan of it. I like a hard kind of percussive clean. So all I've got is an amp, a reverb, the gain down, the bass down, and I'm not sure why the treble went down. That doesn't want to be there. Put the treble back up to five again. Again, I love the fact that you can just double tap there and press five. That's nice, so you get exactly the number you want. So let me play that for a bit and see what that sounds like. I'm turning the mic off so it doesn't bleed through, the, the strings don't bleed through. Well, I have to say, Mark Bell says not yet. Voice Live 4 Extreme, I know. I'm, I'm hoping, I really hope they do it. But will it, I mean, you know, Fractal, Line 6, Kemper, these guys are known as being the kings of the modeling world. Will, will the Voice Live 4 have that kind of modeling? I mean, I hope so. The other option, of course, is to use your Voice Live 3 for your vocals and looping and use this for your guitar, because it's very small. So you could have the two on a board and have the best of both worlds. That's probably a good option. Chet Pun says, hi Aaron, just started my work. I'll be watching it now. Check Hulk stream. Yeah, no problem. Of course, this stream will be up forever. This is, um, I just like when people are here to help me out. I was actually hoping some fractal users would come in here today and tell me how to use the product. Because <laughs> like I said, I haven't had the chance to read the manual yet. But I have to say the tones are really good. There's quite a lot of reverb there. I mean, I like reverb, that might be a bit too much, and the, the high end's a little bit much, but that's fine. Let me just see what the reverb's doing. So this is a studio type, and you've got the size and the time there, so I would bring, and the mix as well. So I could bring the mix down, and I could bring the size down as well. Let's see. It's still quite big, isn't it? That's, a, that's big. Oh, it's got a hold as well. Again, the Kemper has a hold, and I wish everything had a hold. The hold is so cool. Let me see how it works on here. Not like that. Did you hear that? So if you've assigned that to a button, you can play a chord, turn that on, it sustains the reverb in the background, you can solo over it. Now when you solo over it like other freeze pedals, you'll lose the reverb, that happens on the Kemper as well. But you could loop that and then you have your reverb or even maybe assign it to a different, you have, have two reverbs or something, so there's a reverb while you're playing. Again, that's from the Kemper. There's a, you know what I'm getting here? There's a lot of features that I love from the Kemper that are in this product. And there's a lot of features that I love about the Helix that are in this product. It's not exactly the same, but they've, they're, this is a nice kind of in-between, like 
borrowed ideas here. They've got those screens from the Helix. They've got these features from the Kemper. I, I like this, I do. And I think the sound is good. And I've, all I've done so far is play the clean amp. Um, I do think that reverb is a bit much. So let me see what I can do here. Aha, I usually go for a, a hall reverb. So I'll just do a medium hall. Let me see if I can reduce it a little bit. That's cool. And another thing I've learned over the years is you can drag that down. You can make it like this. You, if, you, if you then connect this one to this one, you can have it kind of split. So the reverb, you get the clean signal and the reverb. Yeah, so again, that's a bit much, but it is a, what was that, a like a medium hall? Probably too big of a reverb. And then you can go in and dial it in here, so you can do what you want with that. Yeah, I, I like it. I mean, for, for my clean sound, that kind of does it. Let's check out the delays. So to turn it on, you just double tap on it. You know, the effects as we expect are all excellent. They really are. The reverb, I mean, the effects just sound great. I mean, I don't normally use a chorus or a flanger. Let, let me try them out and see what they sound like though. Why not? I think, I think they sound great. I really do. Everything just, I mean, I got no complaints on the tone. I love these little features they've got in here. Um, like I said, not a big fan of the advanced parameters, but I don't have to use them. So that's cool. Um, the only question I have about this product is the three switches. Are the three switches enough? Now, what I would normally do for a gig, I'm just thinking about that. I'd probably have clean, crunch, and heavy rock. And all I would then need is my tuner and BPM switch and a boost. Now what I've been doing lately, this is a cool tip. I've been setting a delay for my solo boost. And the way I do that is they usually have a level. See, there's a level here in delay. So use that as your boost. Have that boost the signal by 5 dB when you turn on that. Because whenever I take a solo personally, I want delay on it. So what I can do is when I turn on the delay, it can also boost the level for the solo. And that boost is post, of course, it's at the end of the chain. That's a really, really cool tip. And it saves you a block yet again. Because I, I suddenly realized, like, I always turn on the delay and the solo boost when I want a solo to make my volume stand out. And then it's just two button presses. Why not just have the delay boost the level? There you go. So what I could technically have is clean, crunch, heavy. And then on the two button controller, which I, I already own, I could have a tap tempo, which I think is quite important to tap on there. And the last button could be the, the solo boost, which also is delay. There you go. I could do a gig with that. Now that won't give me a looper, it won't give me access to individual effects, but if you if you hold down on these buttons and, and keep them held down, they will then give you three more, it will give you three more options. So on my clean channel, when I hold down on the clean channel, I could then have the chorus, the flanger and the rotary or something like that. So I do think there's a bit of a compromise here and I'm not very good at compromises with gear, I have to admit, but of course the trade-off, the thing you get in return is the size of the product. And you can buy the external six foot, uh, six button foot switch if you want and have all those buttons like you normally would. So I think, I know, what they, I know what they're doing here. They're going for that compact market. There's so many people now that want small pedals, small and light, 
throw them in the backpack and go and do, go and do the gig. That's so, uh, it's, it's a big trend right now. That's what they're going for. I get it. Mark, I love the sound. Mark, I'm going to let you choose the next preset. How about that? Let me go to, that's why I love doing these live demonstrations. No, actually, but no, before I do that, I, I forgot. I have made a song in Band in the Box. So here's Band in the Box. I'll just show you on the screen. All I did here, let me just make sure that you can see it, because I know that you can't right now. All I did here was type in some chords. <clears throat> I typed in some chords and then I chose a style. So let me just show you that on the screen. Okay, so I thought, right, I want something clean. I think D minor is nice clean, isn't it? Everyone loves a D minor clean sound. Maybe a seventh or a ninth, you know? Everyone loves a B major seven, that jazzy, loungy sound. Everyone loves an A minor or an A minor seven. Okay, so we've got that kind of jazzy, um, loungy vibe today. I mean, it is, a, it is the middle of the week, right? Cheers. I'm going to play the track and I'm going to noodle over it. So uh, don't judge me, but let's have some fun here. So I've selected the BPM. You can change the BPM and ban the box. If you haven't checked out ban the box, you just have to. For a musician, especially a solo musician, like or any musician, but especially a solo musician like me, this is a, I was going to say godsend, it really is. You just type in the chords, choose the style from a list of styles, and there's, there's like hundreds or thousands of them. So choose the speed. You can change the speed any time. You can even change the key. So you could play practice in D minor and then change it to E minor, and then change it to G minor. Same chord progression, different key. Anyway, you hit this button here and it will play the track. Let me just make sure it's not too loud for us. And I'm going to solo over it. So let's see what this sounds like. There's that D minor sound, right? Okay, I'm just going to bring this FM3 back on the screen so you can see my patch. Now let's bring this volume up slightly on Band in the Box Mixer. One, one day I'll get two screens, it'll be so much easier to do this stuff. Let me know if it's too loud, okay? One second, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it louder. So I'll just go to the amp block and I will just turn up the level right here. There we go. Again, let me know if the volumes are okay. I think that's cool. All right, I'm going to go around again. Hang on. And I want to add in some delay as well. Okay, here we go. There we go. I could play that all day long. Let me just turn that. Let me just turn that track off. I want to do another track now. 
So yeah, so that's just a clean, I mean, you know, it's just a clean sound with, with reverb, right? But let's try something else. Let's try another preset. I want you to choose the preset for me. So here's the list of presets. I think we should do something heavier for this one because I want to test the heavy sounds. So which one should we do? Let me see what we got here. See if I recognize anything. Uh, well, Friedman, of course, the B100, classic amplifier, lots of fans of that. We have a, the FAS lead is their own kind of lead sound, I believe. That could be interesting. And a modern one, that could be like a metal sound. Brown sound is obviously that classic rock sound. Um, JVM, JTM45. Uh, what should we do? I don't know. And this isn't just the amps, remember, this is actually presets. Um, these are presets that are included in the box. There's a VH4. I love the VH4 on the Kemper. So that'd be a good one to try as well. What do you think? Hmm. Texas Lone Star, that's the Mesa Boogie. Oh, Petrucci. Oh, but oh, Petrucci's rig, rig, FM3 rig. That's interesting. That'd be cool to try out too. These, I'm sure these are all good. There's a Blues Lead preset. Elegant Gypsy. Yeah, which one do you think is going to be heavy, Alec? I want something heavy. I want to do some heavy chords, like thrashy stuff. What do you think? Um, there's more too. There's more here. There's an Edge of Breakup. This is all the presets that you get. Oh my goodness, yeah, there's a lot. I have to say the presets do sound good. I just find, personally, I have to just cut some low end on, the, on my presets, actually for everything, the, Kemp, the Kemper as well. Um, I tell you what, let's just, let's play it safe. Let's choose the, the Freeman B100, just because it's kind of a, a known entity, right? Oh, okay, it's making some noise. So what I'll do is I'll go into the input block and turn on that input gate. There we go, just a little bit. Now, let's see the amp then. Let's see what it sounds like. Oh, it's going to be very loud, so I'm going to bring a level down on this one. Mute my microphone. Check this out. Actually, that's pretty good. I quite I like that quite a bit. Um, let me just again. Let me just cut this a little bit of low end. See what happens. Boost the high just a little bit. It's just the sound that I like, especially in my in ears. Let me see, see what that sounds like. And I'll show you another tip. Yeah, not bad. Now, it doesn't feel sound incredible to me. Do you know why that is? This is a tip that I've learned recently, well, in the last few months. Don't know why I never did this before. Load up the Tube Screamer. Put the drive on zero. Put the, the mix, and um, well, mix obviously on 100%. Level, I would normally put on 10. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, right? No drive, level 10. Tone to taste. Use the tone to adjust the brightness of the amp. Now check this out. Uh, and then the thing is, right, this is what happens. You play it with it, with that drive set up like that, and then you turn it off, and it feels and sounds so wimpy. Let me just do it again. I'm going to play with the drive pedal just for a few seconds, and I'm going to turn it off. You'll see me turn it off, and then see what happens. Right? You tell me, I mean, tell me if you can hear it. It's, it's something that you feel. I'm not a big advocate for that feel word that people throw around, but you do. It just like you lose the power, and, you, and the tone is kind of uh, wimpy compared to it. See what you think. See if it comes across on YouTube.
Hmm, I don't notice it as much as I do on some amps and other products, but I do notice it. And I really like to do that. Just use, the, use it to push the level so it gives it a real kick. I'll just do it one more time. Turn this one on, make sure it's on into the amp, straight into the front end of the amp. And then the amp, you can see the drive is around five and everything's kind of flat. I just got the, the treble up a little bit there. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. And you know what? All that is is a drive pedal into an amp and cab into a reverb. That's that's pretty darn cool. Let me turn on the delay as well. And in fact, let me let me play. Oh, oh yeah, this 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 is what I want to show you. This has been talked about a lot. This is something that's coming. This feature is in the camper again. It's coming to the Helix. This is very cool. Check this out. I want to show you this. And this isn't the best implementation of what I'm going to show you. What it is, is a... <laughs> oh, hang on. I've got to figure out how to do it. I want to do the... Um... <laughs> of course, I may not be able to figure out how to do this. I want to show you the, uh, the pitch. There is a pitch block in here to change the tuning of the patch. And I want to demo, demo that. Problem is, I haven't figured out yet how to load it up. Let me just see. It's not there. That's the delay type. Uh, I might not be able to figure it out. There, there's a, unless I can find a patch that has it in here. Oh, actually, no, it must, it must be easy. Come on, I can do this. I can do this, bear with me. Here we go. Look at this. This is all your blocks, right? There is a pitch. There's a virtual capo. That's what I'm thinking of. Does anyone see it here? It's got to be here somewhere. Let me find it. I have to show this off. It's so cool. I've seen it used online. And I think there's a new algorithm in the X3 that's coming to this. Hopefully it's coming to this. There's the looper block, by the way. Uh, mixers, compressors, Project EQ. Pit is it pitch one? I don't think so. Hmm, let me see. Ah, oh, not enough TP. Let me just see. Let me get rid of something then. Oh no, I, 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 have, I really want to show this. I hope, I, I hope that I don't... I hope I'm, I'm not unable to show you this one. Ah, there we go. I just deleted the block. Delete those two. Patch those two. Patch these two. We go in here and add the pitch. Where's it gone? Which pitch one? I hope that's the one. Yes, it is. Is that it? Oh, no, it's not. I want the virtual. I want the virtual capo. There it is on the pitch block, virtual capo. All right. Now, check this out. Here's standard pitch. Thank you. 
Hmm, so what do you think of that? It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. I'd say it's about as good as the one in the Kemper. I think this is the old al algorithm, and they've updated the algorithm for the X3, and I think it's coming to this in the future. If it does, that'll be really cool. There's a kind of warbling. There's no artifacts as such, but I can hear kind of like a, a volume swell or something. I don't know if that's just user error or if that's something to do with the algorithm, but I mean, it sounds really good, right? For that kind of Hendrix thing. So that, I tell you what, let's have some fun. Let's go back to Band in the Box. Um, and let me just show you this on the screen. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how easy it is to build a backing track, okay? I'm taking a lot of risks here today, but I don't mind. Um, let me know if you've used this software, by the way, because I really, really like it. It's really awesome. And if you haven't used it, you really should check it out. Because look what I can do here. I can have hours of fun with this. I can come here and make a new song. Let's get rid of my jazzy song. My, I wasn't feeling too loungy today. Let's do a new track. No, don't save that. Actually, no, save it. Oh, well, too late. Um, let's do a Hendrixy kind of thing. Let's do maybe E minor. And all you do is type in the chords. So let's do like uh, E minor, two, three, four, to, um, to G, maybe, to D, to A minor, to E minor, to A minor, to D and D. I'm just literally making up chords as I go. And uh, let's say here we're in E minor, so I'm gonna change that key. You don't have to, but I'm gonna set it to E minor. And I'm gonna say this is eight bars long, so one to eight, that's all I do. Okay, there we go. And it's gonna repeat that three times. Now all we do is a bit like with our presets, we just could, oh, by the way, thank you, Paul Green for that. Yeah, so the virtual capo is in the pitch block. Yeah, I got there in the end as I, as I usually do. Um, browse styles with info. Okay, so I'm gonna type in kind of, I guess it's a bluesy thing, right? So type in blues, my computer's slowing down. That's fine, I've got a lot of stuff running right now. Um, and let me see, I can audition these by playing them. So you just highlight the one that you want to audition, press play. I'm going to bring the volume down just so I don't blow us away. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, that's nice. I'm going to keep that. And the volume didn't seem to bring it down, did it? But that's fine. Um, click OK. Now, bring it down on here again so it's not too loud. Let me just play. So all you do is you press play, and it will now generate a backing track with those chords at that time signature that tempo, just press on play. Oh, pitch block, yes, yeah, so always put your pitch block at first thing, you're absolutely right. That's my, that's my user error again, sorry about that. I'll try it again. But first of all, let's try this track. Now we get a lovely track here, we get different instruments in the track as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them out though, because obviously I wanna play them myself, right? So let me go to Band the Box Mixer. Here's your guitar one. Here's guitar two. Let's take those out, because we're gonna play the guitar ourselves. We've got bass, organ, and drums. Okay, so that's nice, let me stop that. Now we can sit there and we can play that in E minor. Let's do something fun. Let's change the key and let's try and do this virtual capo thing. This is gonna be a complete risk here, but I don't mind. Let me click on here, transpose to E flat minor. It just changed the key of the song to E flat minor. Now, of course, my guitar is now no longer in the right key. All I will do is I'll go to the FM3 edit software 
I wanted to show it on the screen again so you can follow along with me. Okay, you can see it now. Now let's try this. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you on the screen because I appreciate your help with this. And of course, I don't know why I didn't think of that myself. I'm going to uh, remove this wire pedal. And I'm gonna bring my pitch to the front. Just dragged it over. And again, I've never used this before. This is all just guesswork here. And it seems pretty intuitive. I don't know how this will work when I use the buttons on the control on the pedal. I hope I can make it work for me, but using the software is very easy. Now let's turn the pitch on. All right, let's try it now. We're gonna go down one. It's gonna put every single string down a pitch. Now remember why this is impressive. With something like a guitar that has a hexaphonic pickup, it can track each string. With this, this is software doing everything itself. So you often get artifacts and things because it can't track too well. But let's see what it sounds like. And remember, this isn't the latest algorithm either. So let me see. I'm going to mute my mic and play the guitar. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it was turned on. That tracking was so, and the sound was so good when I moved that to the first block. Thank you, Paul Green. I don't think that was even turned on. Well, was it? It looks like it is. Let's see. Oh. Oh my, I wasn't swearing there. I just hit mute by mistake. How about that? I just detuned the guitar virtually with the pedal. Wow. I'll give that a wow. I only see, as you, if you watch my channel, you know I only say wow at certain things, but wow. <laughs> Again, this is on Kemper. It works pretty well. It's coming to Helix. I'm sure that they keep talking about how great it's going to be. I'm sure it will be. But oh my goodness. Did you hear that? I, am, I, am I crazy? But that was awesome, right? That sounded like I tuned the guitar down. Wow. Well, I'll give it wow, wow, wow. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play my song on Bandbox. I'm going to solo and play over it. Remember, remember, the guitar is in standard tuning, and I just changed the key of my song in Bandbox with one click, and I just changed the tuning of my guitar with one click. So let's see what this sounds like. Let's just get my levels right. Give me a second. Let me, go, let me go around again. I don't know why it's finishing on. The, oh, I know. I know. That's fine. Let me go around again. Here we go.
Yeah, I apologize. My, my, my levels are all over the place. I've got the guitar t turned right down to like three right now, which isn't what I wanted. But you can hear. I mean, you tell me. I'm using my in-ear headphones. I think it sounded great. I feel the latency. There is latency there. But for a gig or something or a quick jam or recording, that is so useful. And like I said, on the X3, that's even more impressive, I'm told. That's, that has like a really low latency on there. So... I don't know. I'm I'm really really impressed. I really am impressed with that. Let me just see. I just want to see if I can do that again and just change the. I just want to change the um, the mix of the stuff. Here we go. So I'm going to bring the song up. So I can bring the guitar up as well. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's better. Now I I feel like I feel like that chord isn't quite right. So all I got to do is stop it and go into the chords. I'm going to change the chords. I'm going to do E flat minor. I'm going to do E flat minor again, and then I'm going to keep it real simple, like A flat minor back to E flat minor. I'm just literally typing them in right now. Then I'll do a B minor. Or well, obviously B flat minor because I'm in a I'm in the flat key now, and A flat minor to back to E minor again. So let me type that in. A flat minor. So that's how easy it is on band the box to change it. You literally just go in and just type in the new chords, and I'm going to remove the chords that I don't want. Just delete them literally, and it will create a new track. I just press the play button to create a new track again. And it'll be ready to go. Let me just do that right now. So it's, it's regenerating the track with the new chords. Hopefully they'll sound good. We're going to see. Here we go. And I'll come back to FM3 edit and I'll play at the top of that.
All right, one more time. I can <laughs> promise my computer running all these different things with the streaming as well. He's grinding to a halt. I'm going to do one more playthrough. I think I've got my levels right now. Here we go. Wow, there we go. I mean, it works as advertised, right? I actually can't believe it. That's so good. That's so, that tracks so well. So Paul, just uh, Paul, if you're still here, do you have one of these? I'm I'm really impressed. So basically, again, to kind of summarize, they got a big selection of stuff here. Okay, there's not as many amps as in the Kemper, but the effects, there's definitely more effects and the effects are all fantastic. The interface, I mean, yeah, the editor works great. I don't, again, the, the big thing for this is how is the pedal gonna work with the three buttons? But the sounds are great, the effects are great. I mean, I'm, I, I can't believe they also have those features from the Kemper as well. They're so clever to take those ideas. The always on tuner, the freeze effect, the things that I love about the Kemper, but they've got them in here. This is awesome. And they've also got kind of more, I don't wanna say more effects, but the effects really are incredible. I mean, that, that pitch block effect is absolutely fantastic. I mean, that just, it just feels natural. And this is the old algorithm. If this is the old algorithm, I wanna try the new algorithm right now. <laughs> That's incredible. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna try one more amp. I'm gonna try the diesel. And remember, I'm just scratching the surface here. I, I'm just literally playing through presets. This is kind of nothing. Um, this does so much more. And I will do a follow-up video. I'll do a I'll do a yeah a proper video of this like a proper review. So please subscribe to the channel. This is really just my first impressions. Let's load up that VH4. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna bring the volume down on the amp just slightly. Now, like I said, I like to run the drive pedal in. So this is the amp by its. So that's good, but of course, like I said, I want to run the Tube Screamer, drive on zero, level on 10, and then use the tone to adjust the tone to taste. Let's see. Thank <laughs> you. 
I know it's it's squealing. I don't know why. I'm getting like, why am I getting a squeal when I when I'm only using in-ear monitors? I guess the gain is just that high, right? I had the game cranked on ten. Um, I know I got I got to try that. If there's any effects you want me to try, then let me know. But I got to try that pitch block again. It's so cool. I just I mean, there's other effects too. There's detuners and things. That's cool. But I just love the virtual capo. What can I say? Let me, I'm going to keep going down. Let's see, let's see what happens if I keep going down in pitch and see if it handles it. Ready? Yeah, I'm probably not going to run this at minus 24. That's crazy. Most detuners go down to minus 12, which is your octave, right? Like your bass, that's, that's an octave below the bass. That's, you know what? That's absolutely incredible. It's better than the, the Kemper version. It's coming to the Helix. I hope they do it as well as this or better. Wow, what a great feature. Suddenly, I mean, the thing about the Variax is it won't replace the Variax because the Variax allows you to do things like a drop D or open tuning, because it has individual pickups. So that's something this will never do. But if you've just got one guitar that doesn't have uh, modeling in it, and you just want to drop down a semitone, then, I mean, this is more than good enough. Like Paul said, make sure you put the pitch block first in the chain. Otherwise, you get some weird effects. That makes sense. Always put pitch things first. I get it. Wow, that's incredible. Wow, I'm really, I, I, that's, I, I can't, I'm just, I love it. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> Glad you're enjoying FM3. Axe for you here waiting for FM3. Okay, great. Yeah, good, Paul. But then, Paul, I mean, I would love to try the Axe FX3. I mean, that having this with unlimited blocks pretty much must be absolutely incredible. Uh, Warren, did you pass on my address? No, actually, you never sent it to me. Can you do me a favor and email me? Um, I'll put my email on the screen. Send me an email with your details and, and we'll chat on email, okay? So, I'm really impressed if there's nothing anyone wants to see. I mean, first impressions of this thing is it's absolutely, it's just fan, it's fantastic. I really, I'm just blown away. I really am. This is a great product. 
I will just say um, the big thing for me is how is the interface? Can you get by with three buttons? Because obviously a lot of products have more buttons and even my Helix has like 10 or more buttons. And even with that, I sometimes feel like I, I could use more buttons. Yeah, so you could use a MIDI controller with this, you could use any MIDI controller, or you can buy their controller, which I'm sure is fantastic. Of course, it makes it bigger. But I mean, I don't know. You're gonna, if you wanna know the answer to that, you're gonna have to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for my, my, my thoughts in the future. But my goodness me, I mean, that, that pitch thing is absolutely mind blowing, isn't it? I, I really hope the one that comes to the Helix is like that because what a useful tool for musicians. Absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna play one more time. Again, I wanna show you the drive on, drive off. I'll be making a video about that in the future, so do subscribe. I'm just gonna have a little bit of a play. Any, any amps you wanna see, um, type them on the screen. I'll, I'll gladly show you, but I'm gonna have a bit of a play here and um, I'm gonna put my message on the screen. Please like, share, and subscribe. Almost at 5K, please share this with your friends. I'd love to get there soon. Just finished my version of The Gambler. It's going to come soon. I have some teasers out on my social media. So please follow me, Aaron Short Music. And watch out for more videos. Now I've got these three as well. I'd like to compare all three of them. The Helix, the Kemper, and the FM3. So I'll be doing some videos on that too. But really it comes down to interface and, and features. And this thing certainly has the features nailed, doesn't it? And the rest of it, well, we'll find out in time. But yeah, I'm going to have a bit of a play. And I will see you next time. JTM 45, short. Remember, remember, these are just presets. These aren't even like amps or presets I made myself. I always feel that presets you make yourself are the best because they're for your guitar and what you're playing. But yeah, let's try the JTM 45. Again, with and without a drive pedal, here it is.
Yeah. The only thing I notice is that when you're using the editor and you turn a block on or move to a different block, there can be an audio dropout. But I mean, I mean, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, that's the only thing I can really criticize. The effects are great. The interface is great. Everything here is so well thought out. Yes, it's involved if you want it to be. Don't let yourself get sucked into that rabbit hole of tweaking. All the sounds here, all the pre I, I've never said that before when presets sound that good. Usually presets are useless. Usually I have to remake them myself. I could light up three of these presets and do a gig and, and I'd be fine with it. So all I have to do is decide how I will use the buttons, how I will assign, use it with only three buttons. That's my only question. So if you're thinking about getting the X3, then get it because if that sounds like this with much more power and even more features, it's a complete no brainer. That must be a great product. I'd love to try that. It doesn't really fit into what I want from a product with the portability, but what a great thing to have, right? Wow. So yeah, it's a thumbs up from me. I'll, I'll be doing a, a full review of this product. Um, thanks for hanging out today. Again, check out Band in the Box. I'm really loving that lately. I'm making lots of backing tracks with it. I'm using it to play over. It's really cool too when you make your presets to play over them, over, over the track, because then you can see if it actually fits in the mix or not. So check out Band in the Box. Um, if you're using the, the um, if you tried the FM3 the X, X, um, X3, XFX, uh, what's it? I'm confused now. There's so many different names and letters. If you've used the fractal, the new fractal units, do let me know. Let me know what you think. Any cool tips or tricks, let me know because this is my first time using it and I have a lot to learn. I hope some of the tips I gave you were useful and I hope to see you again soon. So please subscribe, share with your friends and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great night, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.